Well, Sean, one thing that we do in our business, when we're, we're, we're getting these opportunities, we're all these TV screens, in general, we bet on ourselves. Shouldn't do that if you're a professional. <laughs> and we, we got to get right. into these scandals that are popping. We were talking about this earlier. We echoed, you told me, like, hold it up because we already yeah, saw. We're just going to record. We were about we're, to record the pod before the pod. Right. I'm just like, I don't wait to record this with you because I feel like my, my phone is going to go off and I'm actively looking at my phone because this is how much, how many betting scandals have proliferated on our streets in the last week. Right. You got you went from JB Bickerstaff saying that dude was approaching them, trying to threaten them on some betting stuff. Uh Allie saying Tyrese Halliburton saying that he felt like a prop bet. Uh we've had this constant conversation with gambling Twitter on the NBA's neck anytime they phantom take a rebound away or don't credit an assist or something like that. But now it's it's finally hit the fan with professional athletes starting with Shohei Otani and this whole situation with his interpreter where he's saying that the interpreter was interpreting different stuff which gotta be the most well gotta be a nightmare scenario scenario for someone in a different country where you're saying if, if you if anybody out there who's watching Shogun you would definitely feel this where you you are trying to get translated you know, you're trying to convey a message and you are shook that they are going to say something completely different other than what you're actually saying. But this is what we're being sold, that his interpreter was lying about him paying off the debts, came clean to him and said, well, I actually use your money to pay off these debts. Now he's fired. Now there's a cloud over Shohei, whether or not he was actually involved in that. He says that he wasn't. Then, to me, the more interesting one was John Tay Porter, Michael Porter Jr.'s, Jr.'s brother, who, I cannot believe I'm saying this, is being accused of point shaving. Like, we joked, how many times have we joked about point shaving? And it's actually, we're seeing it where, for those of y'all who don't know, there's been two instances, the NBA tracks a regularity on, on bets to see if there's anything fishy going on. Two separate instances, Jonte played four minutes or less in a game due to the Raptors' string of injuries. He was getting, he's somebody who doesn't really normally get time. He has a, he's on a minimum salary, a two-way contract with the Raptors. Doesn't really get time. So when you have six people out, you're going to get time and the books put you on for a certain amount of over-unders, points, rebounds, assists. Just so happened to get in the game, doesn't hit overs, hits all his unders, and then leaves the game not to return. And did that in two separate occasions. And the two separate occasions he did that, his props were the biggest money maker. His unders were the biggest money makers those nights. NBA saw that and said, okay, we got to check this out. We don't know what happened. That's the extent of what we happened in. But Sean, what are you seeing? How's the gambling world reacted? And what are you seeing? What are your thoughts on all of this stuff popping up? Yeah, well, let's be clear. These are two completely different things. Right. Shohei Otani and his interpreter, whoever was gambling, someone was gambling over there. And money was coming out of Shohei's account and going to gambling a, a and losing. Let's let's be gambling clear. and losing. They were selling because if they were losing, we wouldn't have heard about yeah. this. Yeah. Shohei would have been would have would have been quiet. They wouldn't have heard yeah. nothing about this. They was winning. That's the biggest one. They was yeah. losing. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Big, big dollars. And <laughs> the but I do want to be clear how different these two things are. Mm -hmm. Shohei or his interpreter, whoever was gambling, I could care less. Personally, if an athlete is betting on football on Sunday and he plays for the Dodgers, who gives a fuck about that? That's my opinion. I don't care about that. Now, being in California and it being illegal is a completely different thing. Dealing with a completely illegal bookmaking operation is completely different. But that athlete and interpreter, whoever, is dealing with a completely different thing. There's no evidence of them betting on baseball or on the Dodgers or on their personal stuff. They were betting on sports in general. What Jonte Porter was doing is purely messing with the integrity of bas NBA basketball games like Donahue, and that it can absolutely not happen. Period, point blank. You're actually fucking with the randomness of live sports and games. That's why, like some people say, why wouldn't someone be able to, why, why, isn't, why aren't players allowed to bet on their own overs? It's like, yeah, well, 
if I on an over three prop, you think I'm making an extra pass? I'm putting that bitch up. <laughs> like, so, like, that's why there's a difference here, right? So, when we talk about point shaving on games versus point shaving on your own personal player props, it's a completely – you're – you're, you're fixing a market. Those other guys with the Dodgers were gambling. These guys are actually communicating and fixing a market, consciously going out and doing things that were going to make them money and changing the aspect of basketball games. So, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up on the, the, the differences there. But, yeah, I mean, overall, Jonte in the NBA, Jonte needs to be made an example of. I don't think I'm talking if life. This is the case. If this is the case, allegedly, allegedly. I'm talking right, right. allegedly. I'm talking lifetime ban, never to be heard from again, because the cat has been let out of the box, and the amount of money that the NBA would have to turn down now with these sports betting companies is so massive that I'm not sure they're looking to do that. This is a business at the end of the day. This is entertainment. So silver, the amount of money that silver and the gang across all leagues have coming in, they're just going to figure out a way to make it so dangerous that you would never think about betting on sports because you'll never play. You'll never be heard from again. You lose out on millions of dollars. Jeff, I think the key here is, especially with the player props and why people are talking about removing college player props is – the the barrier of entry to fix these markets is so low now. You they're hanging props on a guy at Valparaiso in Indiana. You understand what I'm saying? Like that guy is so easily contacted and potentially pulled into a situation that he doesn't he can be influenced very easily. If you before all these prop markets and that stuff was out here. First of all, you had to sh- you had to fix the whole game. It's easy for for a point guard not to take any threes. <laughs> like that's easy to do, right? Like so that it's easy for guys not to grab rebounds. Does it look fishy sure, but like that type of stuff is a lot easier than trying to manipulate the entire game to keep a game from from to keep a game within 5 points. Like that's very difficult to do. The prop market is is is, is very very different especially when we're talking about like even the guys keeping score here for the NHL on shots. Like these are regular dudes just bookmaking like, Oh, that's a shot. Yeah, sure. But like, Hey, for an extra 10, make sure these, if it looks like a shot or a save, I need it to be a shot and a save like that. The entry level to talk to guys like that is so low. That's where, this stuff gets a little spicy. But I will say this. It it does seem like a lot of these guys are just so stupid. The fact that you're wiring millions of dollars out of Shohei Otani's personal account to a known bookmaker is mind-boggling to me. Yeah, the you fact should, you that... at least know the rules. You should at least be like... Uh, yeah, like, dude, what, what do we have show companies for? What do we right, have like, what are we for? doing, what right? We, we lose the recipe show. We don't got weed carriers anymore. Ever since weed was was legalized, they don't. The concept of the weed carrier right. has been completely eliminated from the culture, bro. Like you gotta have somebody that's willing to facilitate that to take the hit and and not have as much exposure as Shohei Otani. And right. Vin, and here's the other thing, Shohei, I can understand. He make that type of money where maybe four point five mil he don't notice. Right. Like maybe he he that type of rich where he's not in his chase account every day. Like yo, do I still got this money? But that's still nut because you know eventually someone is going to find out and ask a question. And now we here. Right, exactly. Like what what makes you think people betting ten twenty thousand dollars on Jonte Porter unders? is not going to be suspicious across the board. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And then you're leaving the game with eye inflammation and all types of shit. eyes acting up. Yeah, my, like, and, hey, for me and you, for guys being on TV, when your eyes act up, it is kind of rough. I I mean, yeah, you're staring (laughs) at a camera and doing all of that. But, yes. That makes sense, but. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff still to come out on the Jonte and show anything. I, my my gut feeling, Jeff, and I've been outside of when I'm breaking down games and going through analytics that way. I'm a I'm a big time feel dude and gut guy. My gut tells me something's not adding up about the whole Shohei Otani thing. Like that's just my gut. I don't know anything. I don't really. I'm not really. Because this is completely different for me. I actually don't care about the Shohei thing because it's not like what Jonte is doing. I don't care. I don't care if Shohei Otani is betting ten million a, a week on NFL. Who cares? I could care less. the The thing with Jonte is, is a big, bigger story for me than the Shohei thing. But the reason the Shohei thing is is massive is because if he if he does know or was involved, then we're talking about missing out on the biggest superstar in baseball for a potential season and the MLB can't have that. The NBA could could shoot Jonte into the sun and it, <laughs> and nothing would happen, right? But the the MLB can't have Shohei miss the Shohei miss the entire season. He's too big to fail. He hit we're, we're back to a great recession. This is the great yes. recession of MLB. Shohei Otani is literally too big to fail. Too Somebody big. gotta spoil on the sword. The interpreter his man fell on the sword. And when I read I read an article on um on ESPN where they spoke about the relationship between his interpreter and and um, Shobi and his interpreter. Bro, this sounds like the oh, like a consigliere, or at the very least, like if you watch wrestling, this is his Paul Heyman, the guy that does everything, that makes sure his his travel secure. He's with him in the dugout. He he don't move unless his interpreter is with him. Yeah, that's like it's almost like like royalty type situation. Like he's the hand of the king. He's the hand of the king. And for it to go from the hand to, yo, this dude was stealing from me, that's when, when people like me and you are looking and saying, I see some smoke. I feel some heat. It might be a fire or two under there. It might just be a fire under two. And I got I to gotta show, show you this, right? Uh, this is what's going to happen now with players and prop betting and all of this. When the Twitter and the NBA, the social investigators get onto it, this was hilarious. They were like, look at Jonte's face after he hits this three. Right? You saw this? Hey, look yeah. at his face. He like, he, he, they go showing up. He's like, yeah. This is what people are saying. Like, you start seeing the 50 cent memes, whatever they said he did, he did that shit. And you know, this is how investigative people get when when we talk about even just tracking prop bets, I've seen it countless times where somebody will, will get uh, discredited a rebound. People will clip it up and say, which rebound was it that you took away? There's no way you could take away this rebound. And then it gets shaved, right? Yeah. Once people start investigating and start putting the breadcrumbs crumbs together, this is a Pandora's box they can't close. So I agree with you. Whatever they got to do, if they find anything, He's got to be a sacrificial lamb. And when you talk about those barriers of entry, right, like those barriers are lowered, I'm of the opinion that for certain things, there should be elevated barriers of resistance. Anything that can be addictive, anything that can harm yourself or others like overuse, like alcohol, right? So you have a barrier of resistance with age, cigarettes, or owning a car, owning a gun. You should have something that, 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 uh, at least some type of qualification or something that says that you are mature enough to do it. And we've lowered this barrier of entry and this barrier of resistance for sports betting to now it's a click of the phone. It's a click on the app and we can bet. And we tell people to bet responsibly and we do all of this. But before, when you only could go to two cities or offshore to, to, to bet as opposed to now, now you get situations where a guy who is making the league minimum 415000 you telling him... He could possibly make that salary in one night if certain people are betting that money or he puts that money down. Everybody may not take it, but some may. And I'm not saying that he did or didn't. It's all alleged. I don't know. But if, if people in his situation could be enticed to do that. So, like, to your point, the NBA is going to have to get, get on this and get on this ASAP because you want to stop the slippery slope before it becomes an avalanche. Once it becomes an avalanche, then we're in Black Sox scandal territory. And yeah. where do we go from it? So soccer, world football was dealing with that. 
You know, they were dealing with betting scandals. Now, League Pass is going to let you prop bet while you watch the game from the app? Bro, I don't know. And, and, and I've, I've heard people dooming and glooming and saying that we're, we're headed towards an epidemic or an addiction or a crisis. It, 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 it definitely feels like first hits on me, second hit you got to pay for with a lot of this gambling stuff. And I, I don't know. It's it's. I'm hoping that they can put a lid on it before, but... We don't know. We really don't know. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is America. This is capitalism. This is pure capitalism. You, you're it's it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And yes, there there is yeah the the barrier of entry stuff is, is very real, and there isn't a barrier of entry. Uh, I mean, you have to be eighteen, obviously, to bet the bet right, sports, right, right. but. What we start talking about is is stuff addictive. Sports sports gambling, just like anything else, is addictive. You just have to be disciplined and, and figure out a way to to maneuver that way. Right. That's why. We, that's why we would tell you. We tell you on MSG. We tell you everywhere else. Lunch money, not rent money. Money that you can afford to lose. That you're not gonna be packing your pockets. But bro, when I went, when I would go to Vegas, right? When I would go to Vegas and I I, my, I play blackjack, I play craps, I play all of that. I had a set amount, and I said. I had a set amount, then I had the emergency amount just in case maybe I was hot and I got caught out there and I was like, yo, this is like the this is like the the limit break of my reserve. Once that's gone, I'm enjoying Vegas. I'm enjoying Vegas. I don't want no no parts of that. You literally gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. Yeah. I think that that's where the discipline starts. Is you gotta be real with yourself. And yeah, this that. is not an investment. This is a game. This is not a money making opportunity. For the average person, it should not be. It's just fun. And treat it like that. The same way you would go to a concert and drop X amount of bread. Treat it like that. Because when we say gamble responsibly, we're not just saying that like um, the, the fast-talking Surgeon General at the end of a set is like, you make all of that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think if you're not, yeah. I think there's, because I've definitely had profitable years sports betting, right? So I think it's, you also win this, so you take it. You know, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm in it on the daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That I'm not talking about, but yeah, I'm in it on the daily. It's that. just if, yeah, it's not a game. It's not to be messed around with. You have to take it seriously. If you're if you're trying to make a profit, it's a very serious business. Um, but yeah, you just got to know what you're trying to get out of out of it. If you're trying to make money, you have to take it extremely seriously and be diligent and be disciplined. But if you're just trying to mess around, and have some fun, then go about it that way. So little bucks you can afford to lose and then and then enjoy yourself at the garden and, and hope for Dante even chance out to hit eight threes. That's it. Man, you want to talk about missing out on some ladders. I Dante DiVincenzo ladders has been money this season. He's been crazy. He's been going crazy, man. God bless whoever of y'all caught the ladders when he broke the record. Caught the ladders when he broke the record. Or if one of y'all was bold enough to go ladders on deuce against the Raptors. Oh, what? Crazy. You want to talk about lunch, but you do drinks are on you.